Hi, I'm Barry Sahajan. This video is about spicing up your lines and chords with uh, harmonics. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe for the many more video tutorials coming up on all aspects of bass playing. Also, I'd like to remind you, all the material on this tutorial will be PDFs and play-along tracks you can find on my Patreon if you'd like to visit over there. This tutorial includes five examples and explanation of how I approach using harmonics in different settings. Five examples included in this tutorial are played with drums and guitar. I think it's important if you're talking harmonics to hear it against what a guitar player does. Yeah, if you're in a band playing in a band and decide to throw some harmonics out there, so you'll be able to hear how it works harmonically and then you can also play along with the tracks and try it yourself and experiment with different harmonics and see how the colors sound. I've produced a few videos on harmonics but in this one I'm going to show you the minimal that you can do to get maximum results. The first example I'd like to cover those two notes. That is a G and a D. You can play them by themselves or together. So what can you do with that? There's a lot you can do. And let me show you. I'm going to keep it very simple. I want to make it uh, functional so somebody can just listen to this and actually get something out of it and use it. So I'm not going to show you how to play harmonic. You can get plenty of instruction on that all over the place. I'm going to show you what to do with harmonics. So we have a G. A G and a D. That would be the root and the fifth of a G chord, for instance. So this works perfectly with a G, of course, and we'll make a chord happen. Let's take a look at this first example in G with the slap line and the harmonics. First of all, I'd like to point out, as you know, we're using a G and a D. Those are the harmonic notes. They are as consonant as it can get in a G chord, the root and the fifth. So it's a very safe place to be. And this is the very first example. They will get more sophisticated as I go through the other four, but we're starting here. So uh, you, can't, you can't lose with that one. It's never going to interfere with anything anyone's playing as long as they're playing any type of a G chord with the exception of diminished or augmented. So uh, the rhythm, the rhythm is important. First of all, I'm hitting a... So there, you're, you're establishing the root on the first beat, which is important because this is in an accompaniment sense I'm doing this. And then uh, on the third beat, you're hitting, a, uh, on another strong beat, you're hitting a pop. One and two and three. The second measure, this is a two measure phrase. So on the second measure, you're, all, you're doing the same thing. You're hitting a strong downbeat on a G. And on the third beat, you're hitting uh, the harmonic. I'd like to point out that I'm using my fingernail on my index finger to strum down to hit the harmonics. I'm doing this because you can get a brighter and louder attack. Two examples I just played in C are very simple examples once again. First one is simply a root and fifth and adding the two harmonics on the second measure. So this is a C chord and we're playing this D harmonic which technically makes this a ninth chord. So you're adding, you're adding an extension of a ninth when you play your harmonic. You can hear that right away. Um, on the second example, it accents the second and fourth beat, the back beat. 
and, and, it, and it's a little busier. And so you've got a kind of a busy driving line and you have your harmonics. I play that two different ways on the harmonics. Uh, you can choose which way you'd like it. I move my whole hand to go over there, kind of get a little more of an accurate hit on the harmonics, or you can use your baby finger. Your choice. B flat chord. So you have a G, which would be the sixth of the B flat, has a sound like that. Works in most cases on B flat chords. And then you have the third, which will work on all major B flat chords, dominant, major seventh. Another thing I added on this uh, was a tenth. I've covered that in another uh, lesson. And I'm going to put it right up there. So the first beat would be just hitting the B flat. The second beat would be hitting the B flat in the tenth, which is a D. And then you hit the two harmonics. And then the fifth. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. This example in F is a little more interesting. It might be considered a dance beat, possibly, or just a different feel. Anyway, let me explain to you what I think uh, makes this a little different and how it works. First of all, this once again accents the second beat, the back beat. And it starts out on one with the, uh, with the harmonics. And speaking of harmonics, this has the same relationship to harmony as the B flat did, except in reverse. In B flat, you had the G was a was a sixth to the B flat. And this one, it's still a six and a nine, but G turns out to be the nine of the F, and D turns out to be the six of the F, in reverse of what happened in B flat. A little theory for you. So anyway, we have on the first beat the harmonics. And then we have, on the second beat, it hits, uh, the back beat is the root, which is different. And then uh, we play a little bit of a pentatonic line, winding up on the uh, third. So it'll be F on the eighth fret, D on the uh, fifth fret of the A string, C on the eighth fret of the E string, to the A. So that technically is a pentatonic scale, one, six, five, um, three. The only thing that's missing is the two, but the two is there with the harmonic. So then we slide into that third, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, four.
Okay, the E flat. Now this chord is, is more specific than the other ones. This is not a chord that you can use anywhere. You kind of have to use it specifically for an E major, major seven, major seven, nine with a 13, uh, or any of those. So it's kind of specific, so don't try this unless you know what you're doing. You're putting it in on an E flat major seven, or you could substitute it for other things if you applied some advanced harmony. Of substitution and things, but we won't go into that now, later. So anyway, it starts out, and uh, this one, by the way, accents beats one and three. It's not a funk line. You can tell that right away, and that would be one of the reasons, because uh, you're, you're getting the accents on one and three. Here's what we have. We have, um, once again, the G harmonic and the D harmonic relates to the E flat harmonically as the G is a third of the E flat. That's easy enough. The D is the major seven. This is why it is more specific, because you have a harmonic extension on the E flat, which is a major seven. So it has to be, it would, it might work with a, if someone were just playing a triad, but maybe not. So you have um, the third and the, and the major seventh, and then sort of a pentatonic thrown in there again. One, two, three, and four. There's your accents, so one and three. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. four. Okay, let's break it down, uh, fingering and everything. Harmonic played on the first beat. And then E flat, two eighth notes on the third beat. Okay, next measure, you play the harmonics, but you play them one note at a time. So this will be two, three, four. You wind up on the uh, root on the fourth beat of the second measure. And then you hit the fifth, and then you hit the major seventh, which would be a B flat on the eighth fret of the D string, and a D on the seventh fret of the G string. And then, then you hit an F, which is a nine or a two, to the third, and we start it over. So this is no piece of cake, this little lick, but it's two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. 